Today we are witnessing two disturbing trends in the country. One is the decline of democracy and the second is the decline of economy. The public sector in India is in immense danger today. On one hand the GDP is in minus and on the other hand the government is on selling spree to balance its fiscal deficit. In fact, it is the public sector that laid foundations of the Indian economy. Public sector by nature is service oriented while the private sector always lusts after profit. In a country with stark inequality, it is imperative that its public institutions function well to support the needy. The coronavirus pandemic has made it clear to us that public institutions need to thrive. It is they who provide the basic necessities of life. It is they who can be trusted to provide what is the need of the hour, while the private sector vanishes in thin air. But what we see is that the public sector is being systematically killed by denying them the basic needs, the basic infrastructure. BSNL is not allowed to get 5G technology and equipment till now. Air India is given the worst flight slots reducing its effectiveness which leads to losses. Similarly, investment is lacking in several crucial public sector units. In this way, we are compromising the economy as well as the national security. Public sector enterprises have played a vital role in the Indian economy. During the last 70 years, the public sector has been the dominant case of capital accumulation in India. 54% of investment in India came from the public sector till the late 80s. In the era of liberalization, privatization and globalization, there have been efforts to block the progress of these along with massive privatization. The World Bank also suggested that the banks should be privatized. Thanks to the resistance from trade unions, employees and the general public, this did not happen. Public sector also indirectly helps in building a thriving MSME sector around it. Industrial towns are good examples of this. All government policies today favor the large corporations at the cost of small entrepreneurs and traders. If this continues, there won't be any independent entrepreneur in the country as everyone would be working for the big corporations. There is a lot of false propaganda against the public sector enterprises. In fact, most of them are profitable and well governed. As per the public sector enterprises survey 2018, the net profit by profit picking PSUs is 159.67 thousand crores. Their total losses are just 19.3 thousand crores, while the losses of BSNL and Air India are just 16 thousand crores. They can become profitable if they are given freedom to compete. Think about who brought back Indian citizens during the Gulf War and the pandemic. Air India who provides services even during the calamities bsnl and mtnl there is a lot of talk of the profitability of the private firms but we should think who is this profit for the net worth of indian billionaires between april and july this year increased by 35% to 423 billion dollars the net worth of india's richest man mukesh ambani rose 73% over the last year to nearly 89 billion dollars adani's net worth has soared by 12.40 billion dollars in a year when the covid pandemic has wreaked havoc with the economy and the industry we need to ask what do they actually contribute to the nation in fact they are the biggest tax evaders along with the rise of crony capitalism we also see the rise of brutal right wing policy and governance today We need higher forms of united resistance struggles in the form of defiance and non-cooperation by the entire working class. We need solidarity of all sections of working people, workers, peasants, agriculture workers, women, youth and students. Come together this 26 November to fight for our demands. We demand cash transfer of 7500 rupees per month to families not paying income tax. We demand free ration of 10 kg per head. We demand expansion of Manrega. We demand withdrawal of labor courts and farm bills. We demand to halt privatization of public sector enterprises, banks, railways, electricity, LIC, etc. And we demand universal pension coverage. People First calls upon all working people, whether unionized or not, affiliated or independent, whether from organized sector or unorganized sector, the women, youth, and students of this country, to intensify the united struggle against the anti-people, anti-worker, anti-farmer, and anti-national policies of the government, and make the call for countrywide general strike on 26 November 2020 a total success. We will fight. We will win.
ఈ వీడియో మీకు నచ్చినట్లయితే లైక్ చేయండి మీకు తెలిసిన వారితో షేర్ చేయండి